Hello and welcome to part two of the Evolution Autocrosser Race Car Workshop Garage Barn Home Build, aka Barn Dominium. It's been a week since the first video, and as you can see behind me, the framers have been very busy at work. They've taken practically the entire pile of lumber that you saw in part one and turned it into this. Well, today we're going to take a tour to see what all has been done so far, but be sure to stick around because after we do the tour, I'm going to go through what it has cost to get to this point. So let's get that tour started and then take a look at those numbers. Let's start by looking at the garage section. This is the 16 foot wide by 60 foot long garage area that should be able to easily accommodate about three vehicles end to end. The middle third is where I plan to put my two post hydraulic lift where I will keep the Evo for working on it. And at the other end of the garage closest to the street is where I'll keep the daily driver car. Of course, with this setup, as you can see, anytime I want to take the Evo out of the middle of the garage, I'll first need to remove the daily driver car from the far end of the garage. But since I don't expect to be doing this every day on a daily basis and maybe only a couple times a month, it's really not a big deal and is only a minor inconvenience. I want to talk about the garage wall for a moment that separates the garage from the main part of the barn. What you see is how it's going to look when it's finished. This is made up of 16 foot tall two by fours faced with particle board or OSB. This specific material was chosen because of its durability and resistance to moisture. Of course, at some point in time, I can always finish this out by covering it with some sort of paneling or shiplap or whatever else I may want to use. I'm not sure what to do here, uh, but, you know, I don't need to worry about that right now. We'll do that down the road, but in the meantime, drop your thoughts below and uh, we'll see what we can do down the road about that. Inside the center 24 foot wide main part of the barn, this is what the dividing wall looks like on this side between the main barn and the garage. There you can see is an opening where a steel door will be installed to allow you to access from the main barn into the garage. And this, what you see right now, is also what you'll see when the barn is done. It's functional, it'll do the trick, and I'm just gonna leave it like this for now, and down the road we'll deal with it, but in the meantime, again, drop your ideas. From inside the main barn, let's go take a look at the apartment. Through these double doors, we'll pass into the living room area. But let's start over here at the far end. At this end will be the kitchen with a window directly over a farm sink looking out the front towards the road. A dining room section right here with a window. The living room will be here. A TV will be mounted on this wall that separates the living room area from the master bedroom. The master bedroom will be 16 by 16 with a double closet that divides it from the living area. There is a double sliding barn door into the master bathroom. We'll have a full glass shower with a window, a double sink vanity here with a window over that, and then over here, a freestanding tub and the toilet over there in that corner by the shower. As you can see, the living space is not particularly large at only 960 square feet. However, the additional almost 1,000 square feet of the two-story loft in the center part of the barn brings the total living space up to about approximately 1,900 square feet. As mentioned previously, the framing is not completely done. There's about two more days worth of framing to be done. And when the framing is complete, this wall will go all the way up to the ceiling, making a full division here between this part of the barn and the enclosed finished part of the barn. All right, so let's walk over and take a tour of the first floor of the loft, and then we'll go take a look at the upper part of the loft. Once you pass through the double doors, the first thing you'll see on your right are the stairs leading up to the loft. Just past the stairs is the door to the office. On the opposite side of the hallway from the office will be three rooms. The first one will be a rather sizable storage room, which I'll just call the Costco room. 
And right next to the Costco room is a full bathroom. And last but not least, the laundry room. Now let's go upstairs and see one of my most favorite parts of the entire build, the second story loft with a balcony. Come on, let's go. All right, check this out. The second story loft. As mentioned previously, this part of the loft will be completely walled off all the way up to the ceiling, creating an enclosed loft area here in the back half of the barn with a balcony and a window on either side. The upstairs loft area is pretty sizable at 24 feet by about 24 feet, but another added feature is that over there in the corner of the loft will be another full bathroom that brings a total of three bathrooms in this entire garage shop barn dominium build. All right, now let's take a look at that second story balcony. Opening the sliding door and stepping out. Ooh, look at that view. I think this is gonna be one of my most favorite places to hang out. All right, as promised, now it's time to get to the numbers. Let me put on my readers here, and here we go. Starting with the foundation, $4,900 for select fill dirt, $3,300 for concrete piers. That's 22 concrete piers at $150 a piece under the foundation. Then another $3,000 for the rough-in plumbing before the foundation was poured. And then comes the concrete pour. $28,830 for the concrete slab for 3,720 square feet of the main slab at $7.75 a square foot. That's a pretty good price, I think, $7.75. And then we have the back porch, which is 96 square feet, also at $7.75 per square foot for a total of $744 for the back patio. Then we have the three aprons, and the aprons are the concrete parts that go out in front of each garage door. Those are at $5 a square foot, 150 square feet total, $750. Then uh, the concrete pumper truck was $1,500 to rent the concrete pumper truck. Total cost for the foundation, everything to do all the dirt work, the piers, everything, $43,024 for the foundation. Now on to the structure. The steel materials was $21,000, give or take. It was around $21,000 for all of the steel material. That's the frame, the wall material, the roof, everything. All the metal was $21,000. The windows were $4,000. Doors, $1,500. That's for the back door, the upper door, and the front door does not include the garage doors, which is extra, so $1,500 for doors. Now, for assembly labor to put all of the shell together on the foundation, that was $19,000 for assembly labor. That was to weld everything together, to put it all together, put all the siding on, all the roof. So $19,000 for labor brings a total cost for the entire shell of the barn to $45,500. And again, that does not include the garage doors or any of the internal wood framing. Total price, $88,520. Now, let's move on to the lumber and framing. The lumber cost $5,735, plus an estimated labor, which I haven't gotten the bill for the labor yet, but we estimate it to be around $5,000 for the labor to frame the entire interior uh, for a total of $10,735 after the framing is complete, which brings the grand, grand total all the way for this point right now to $99,255. Now, what's interesting to know though, is that because we added the second story loft, we expanded the square footage by around 500 plus square foot due to the second story of the loft area. So now the cost is $99,255, but we have a total of 3,936 enclosed square feet which means that the cost per square foot is now 
$25.22 per square foot. So there you go, there's the numbers, there's the thing everybody wants to know, there's the thing I've been wanting to know. Stay tuned for part three coming in a couple of days and uh, I'm looking forward again to your comments, input, suggestions, and questions, so ask away, comment away, let me know your thoughts. Hey, do me a favor, please, hit the thumbs up on this, it'll really help me out, and uh, one last favor, hit subscribe if you haven't yet, so you won't miss an episode, and plus it, it helps my channel out, and I'd really appreciate it, so I can make more content that hopefully you will enjoy. Thank you all very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.